Hello once again my fellow programmers. Welcome back to this problem solving uh, section for PLC animator. Now let's solve this second exercise which is called simple traffic light. First thing we have to do is analyze our instructions to solve our uh, drills. For these instructions we have uh, the following things. Uh, light or power on yellow light or uh, O semicolon uh, 0 0.1 for four seconds using the timer. St uh, step number two after six seconds power on the light for six seconds with a timer on delay T semicolon one and shut off the rest of the lights. So here it's telling us four seconds. Here it's telling us six seconds. That should be four. So I'm going to correct this. Okay. Afterwards, power on green light, which is O semicolon zero dot two for eight seconds with a timer on delay. T2 and shut off other lights. And then instruction number four, repeat this cycle in an in infinite loop. All right, so we have three different timers that are that they're asking us for. Here we made a mistake. So either here or instruction number two, because here it's telling us have it run for six seconds. It's not giving us six, but it's actually giving us four, asking us for four seconds. So that's something that we need to clear up. And we're going to correct for this week. I'm going to ask our programmers to correct them. So first, it's four, and then six seconds for a second timer, and then eight seconds in a third timer. And basically, that'll be it. Now, this is our typical drill that they're asking us for our first classes for a PLC, whatever brand it is, for traffic light. And our instructors are setting up, as an example, our famous uh, cascade timers, which is what we're going to do, run. Now, there's a second way which is easier to solve. Now, we're completely going to listen uh, pay attention, close attention to our instructions. But there's going to be a second part in this video, which we're going to analyze how to solve them more easily. Now, we're getting the indication that we're going to use three outputs. So therefore, I am going to direct my outputs which are one and here O oh, zero point two. Now we need to analyze what is going to uh, power on or power off my outputs. So we're going to go with our conditions. So it's indicating two timers. So therefore we are going to add three new lines. So we have here our outputs, and we're going to select our timers and counters category. So we select three, timer on delay, which is the one that we asked for, we were asked to do, sorry, and perfect. And this is the instruction. First, output point one is going to be energized for four seconds using a T0 timer. It's not asking us to uh, power on 0, 0.0. No, it's 0 0.1. So we need to attend to our instructions the best, as close as we can. So as to not be so obvious and not make a mistake first with our O semicolon 0.0, .0 or 0, 0.0. First, we're going to assign 
our assignment for our timers, which in this case, T0. And it's indicating us four seconds. Okay? T0. So we need to ensure, we need to make sure of this. And then it's indicating a second timer. This is actually saying six seconds. So six seconds, T1. And finally, T2. which, if I remember correctly, is 8 seconds. T2. So, perfect. Now, let's analyze what is going to make our output power on. So, we wish to light on our amber light or our yellow light. And it's telling us that yellow light is what or what is activating this is timer zero so therefore its condition is while it's timing my output is going to power on so we're going to sign here a flag so third also same t0 t0 dot tt so while this is counting, one, two, three, four, it is going to power on this output. So this we already analyzed for our timer, um, our timers class. Now, same thing, it is indicating that after six seconds, while it's timing, okay, our memory t1.tt, T1 dot TT. It is going to power on my uh, second output. And then finally, let's see here. It is indicating that our memory or our T2 timer is going to power on my output or semicolon 0.2. This is a bit tricky, guys. It's saying that this, our T2, is going to be powering on and this is, I mean, this is the instruction that it's giving us. Okay? And our output O semicolon 0 0.0, 0 is going to activate our timer 1 and I imagine that this is getting uh, some mix-ups we're getting some mix-ups with our programmers so to as to not make it as obvious we're going to follow our instructions so we have our conditions which are going to be powering on for each output. T0 is going to power on O semicolon 0 0.1. Our red light Oh, sorry. Sorry guys, I had to switch uh, screens. So then, Yellow light is going to be activated T0. Red light is going to activate T1, or T1 is going to activate red light. And finally, it's indicating that green light is going to be activated by T2. So green light is O semicolon 0 0.2. Now, conditions for which these are going to be powered on uh, our outputs, they are correct, apparently. Let's see if this is true. Now, first it's telling us, let's analyze all conditions for our timers. 
our first timer that needs to be activated is T0. So let's leave it for now without conditions. First one that comes in, there's not going to be a thing that is going to uh, impede it or that's this going to, you know, block it. But we're going to move on to our second timer, which is T1. So it's indicating, it's telling us that when our T0 timer stops timing, that we have to activate immediately our second timer. This is a cascade timer. Okay. So first T0. And when T0 uh, ends, which is when our done flag is energized or our energy, uh, our signal flows, it's going to activate timer number one. And then our timer one, when it ends, is going to run our permission for timer number two. So perfect then. Now, what do we have to do for it to cycle in an infinite loop? Because this timer is going to end, so now we need to restart it. So I would propose that when all of this uh, stops counting, our last step would be timer number two. That's it. Okay. Now let's see if this is true. Let's see what it does. Ready, guys? So we're going to click start first. Yellow light. Red light, which is what we were told to do. And then green light. And then trial by fire. Restart everything till the end and start it up. So yellow light, red light. And if we analyze our ladder diagram, we're going to have it on this way. So count eight seconds here. Four, five, six, seven, eight. It stops. And immediately we get, uh, we restart this or our cycle is restarted. Now, if you notice, we're only using one permission for each output. So then our programmers or our instruction designs for our programming uh, is done this way so we have no we don't have an error that uh, was asked to do this but I'd like to think that it's because uh, so that we don't program the obvious so it's the first uh, output then the second one then the third or zero one two three if you didn't start from uh, halfway through then it goes up and then finally output number one two sorry so this is the right solution, the most obvious solution for this exercise. And this is how the instructions are asking us to do so. Okay, because we understood this correctly and we solved this correctly. Now I'm going to teach you guys a different method to solve this same exercise. So let's get to it, guys. All right, guys, our second method is all about using limits only and using one only timer. Now, let's analyze this. Now, this is only my suggestion for uh, your projects so you guys can take this shortcut. And in case you have a similar drill in real life, you guys can solve this also very quite efficiently. Now here, we're also going to stop our simulation and this is how it looks. We're just going to run a very small modification for our code. So first things first, eliminate the lines, eliminate the timers, the additional timers, and we're only going to leave one. So they're asking us first, four seconds, then six seconds, 
and then 8 seconds. So if we add everything up, we would get 4 plus 6, 10 plus 8. It would be 18 seconds total with one only timer. So here, as a condition, I'm going to eliminate all these flags for timers. And I'm going to direct to my category where we actually see the, the balance for comparison. And I'm going to select my limit instruction. And I'm going to, I'm going to paste it on each line for which, uh, for each line for which we're going to set as condition to compare the different times for my timer zero specifically though for my accumulation uh, memory. Now, accumulation, remember, is real time that we've accumulated. And I'm going to leave this here. For the ones that we've accumulated, or the sun, sorry, the time that has been accumulated, and we're going to use it as a permission to activate or deactivate what our uh, outputs would be. So, we select, and it tells us what do we wish to uh, select, a constant or a file. And we're going to go directly to our constants, which is zero. And it's telling us here, what are we going to test? What is the test? Timer, zero, and we already have our cumulative here. So, that's just, this is perfect. And this is what we're going to start testing. And our constant is telling us 0 to 4 seconds. We are going to activate our first output. Same thing. It's uh, not going to be uh, about the second uh, quarter. But here it's telling us 6 seconds. So in theory, it would be four, if this is true. And here, we have zero, one, two, three. And it could be like this, or we would say we would start uh, zero, one, two, three, four. But just as to not get confused, Let's add it here. Here we go. So from the second zero, to our fourth. Because I'm actually uh, getting confused because we landed on the tricky part here. Because this is uh, backwards. On the bottom part, it's the second, or for the second, from zero to four let's add it as such zero to four what it's asking for uh first is my output number one okay and then it's telling us these are four seconds and then it's telling us that from uh, the fifth second to our tenth second which again we're going to add uh, what we're asking for. Uh, but you see, this is on the top side. Because then uh, it's asking us. That's true. Our output, number zero. This is the one that is being indicated afterwards. So then this is going to be from the second five to second eleven. to power on the first output. And then finally, it's indicating us that for eight seconds to power on our second output. So second 11, sorry, 12, to second 20. On that same accumulation, to energize this other output. So then what we're 
basically doing, uh, let's add 20, which is a, an approximate, is the following. From the second, uh, from second two and fourth, it's going to power on the first output, which is point 0.1, which is yellow light. And then in six seconds, that's why I'm adding here uh, between second five and second 11, we're going to power on our output in red. So, uh, hello, point zero, and then here, here we go. And then afterwards, when it's a when that timer is between second twelve and twenty, then it should power on. Okay. Now, why did we add twenty? Only for practical reasons so far, but we need to add whatever seconds that we're going to need. So you guys can start calculating this. Now, let's see if this is true. Now, the only thing that is missing so that this uh, becomes infinite is to repeat our timer, but with our done flag. So when this ends, it's going to interrupt, and it's going to be between uh, false and true. And we'll see if this uh, restarts. Let's see if this is true. So this restarts. And let's see, perfect then. This is yellow. Then red light between uh, the 5th and 11th second. And then we get green light. Okay. And this makes everything more continuous. Now 3rd and 4th between the 5th and 11th second. And then green light. Now, the advantage here with limits is if we first indicate a, sec a seconds range, it's only going to listen to uh, this range for the one that we have for output. And whenever it's out of range, it's not going to listen to the rest of the outputs because it's not the corresponding angle uh, for it to power on. So in theory, we're decreasing the lines. So we're only using four, and now we're only using one timer only. So here we need to analyze correctly our limits as far as seconds or ranges, whatever you need. Test it, try it, and obviously this method is going to uh, be good for the rest of our PLCs and uh, our brands. What did you guys think? What did you guys like better? This second method or the first method? I know that we're not getting this, uh, this second method, we're not going to get it listed in our instructions, but that's what this course is for, to complement. Not only uh, stay with one condition and keep it like that. If I see anything else further down, I'm going to start proposing this and I'm going to start analyzing so you guys have a better view on a uh, ladder diagram. So guys, we're done with this, so let's head on out to our next exercise or our next class. I'll see you guys, and big hug, guys. Thanks for everything.